Hey everyone, what's on the menu today? That is the question, and what I mean is what is on my menu bar? Uh, today I wanna to talk about some menu bar apps that I have, I'm talking about these little guys up here, all these little icons and symbols, and I wanna just uh, share a couple of the main ones that I use to just be more efficient on, on my Mac. Um, this uh, video pretty much just accompanies the blog post that I've already written. If you want links to any of these tools, check out the post uh, linked in the description of this video. And uh, as I kind of said in the post, like my enthusiasm for Mac productivity has really kind of gone on overdrive this year since I started listening to the Mac Power Users podcast, which I've linked in my article. If you are a Mac user and you're looking to use your Mac in a more productive way, I highly recommend you check out the Mac Power Users podcast. Some of the apps and tools that I'm mentioning up here have come from recommendations from listening to the show. And uh, yeah, they, they actually did a great episode a few months back on menu bar apps um, where they did talk about a few of these these, these um, apps up here. And so today I just want to share the apps that I'm using. And um, as uh, we talked about when I had my interview with David Sparks, who's one of the hosts of the Mac Power Users podcast, the importance of really using your Mac is that, you know, if you can be more efficient on your Mac and or, or your your computer, whatever tools you're using for that matter. If you can be more efficient and do things quicker, it's gonna save you a lot of time. It's gonna just help you to get things done faster. So I think there is a lot to be said to tinkering and, and optimizing your systems and your tools. So hopefully you get something useful from this episode. So the menu bar, let's have a look at what I've got up here. Um, this little this little recording icon. This is the QuickTime recording icon. This is not usually there. It's only it's only appeared right now because I'm actually recording my screen. So this uh, this isn't usually here. Um, I've also got the time, the spotlight menu, and my notification center. These I keep out by default, and really everything else I keep hidden in this uh, this little sub menu here. This is called the bartender bar, and so you can see it's it's. Um, collapsible by clicking these three dots. And if I click on the preferences here, you can see that um, the bartender bar can be customized and I can set which apps appear in the bar versus on the main menu bar. So if I want, I can have certain icons always show on the main bar. But I, I like to actually keep everything consolidated and, and hidden from view. I just find that when everything's hidden, it just feels a lot neater. And so my preference is to just have everything hidden like this. So the bartender bar is a really nice little um, app that you can use to tidy up your menu bar when you do have a lot of apps running like I do. Um, and uh, yeah, it's, uh, here are the settings. Like if you wanna pause the video and look through any of these settings, you can. It's pretty straightforward, there's not, there's not much to it. Going from left to right, um, starting over here, this little train icon, this is trip mode. Now trip mode um, automatically, whoop, here we go, where's, where's trip mode gone? Did it just cancel? Oh, look, it did. <laughs> there we go, I'll have to open that again. Here we go, so trip mode, uh, trip mode I've activated it now. You can see my pop-up has appeared. Um, only selected apps will now be able to be able to access the internet. What trip mode does is it looks for when you're on a personal hotspot and it limits which apps can use the internet. So I've manually turned it on here, but when I connect my computer to my personal hotspot on my phone, when I'm on my cell cellular data, it restricts which apps can use the internet. So things like Dropbox, Evernote, iCloud, Backblaze, all these kind of heavy data using services can actually be restricted while I'm on personal hotspots. So it's a really handy feature when you're on the go, if you have limited cell data, um, trip mode is a really good one for just saving your data. And like I said, it actually activates automatically when you um, join a hotspot. So that's really cool. Then we have Alfred here. Um, Alfred is, Alfred, this is the main app. I've, I'm using the keyboard shortcut option space to trigger Alfred. It's basically like Spotlight Search, but it's a lot more customizable. Um, one of the really cool things that I like is the custom searches that you can set up. So for example, if I type the word payment, and then if I search for an email address, I can now um, instantly search for a payment on my website in my WordPress backend to find the details of um, uh, somebody's order. So when I get people uh, wanting to um, ask questions about their order or I need to find a payment, I can quickly find it using Alfred. So that's just one example of like um, a quick search. Another one is I've set up a custom search for Google Trends. So I want to search Google Trends for the keyword like productivity. So I can say trend productivity it will then open, oops, I've obviously typed it wrong. Let's try that again, trends. Let's try that again. Here we go, trends productivity. And it'll basically open Google Trends to see the 
uh, search volume for this keyword over time. So that's like another example of what you can do with Alfred. Um, I, one of my favorite features is actually the clipboard built into Alfred. So if I press control space, here I can now see all of my previously copied uh, pieces of text. And um, I can very quickly go back and access uh, old bits of copied text. And, and you wouldn't believe how much this can speed up your productivity on the Mac when, by quickly going back and finding old bits of text and numbers and things that you've copied. This is actually incredible. It takes a little bit of getting used to, um, just to remember that it's there. But this feature of Alfred is, is, is actually like probably worth the full price of Alfred alone. So I really like that. The menu bar app itself like probably doesn't get a much use. Um, it's just for toggling Alfred on and off, but the app does live up there as well. Then we have Hazel. Hazel is a really great document automation app. So it's uh, accessed here from the system preferences. And I've, I've done a video on Hazel before. Basically what Hazel does is you train Hazel to look at um, a folder. So in this case, Hazel is watching the downloads folder and then it'll look for documents that meet certain criteria. So for example, in this case, it's searching for PDFs that have the word pipe drive and it has my customer number and a certain date. And then what Hazel will do is it'll automatically rename that, that receipt to have the date of that invoice and then it'll move it to my receipts folder in, in Dropbox. So it actually automates a lot of my receipt management when I get payments and receipts coming into my email. I can just quickly download the email or download the attachment and all my receipts get nicely renamed and stored away. So Hazel is really great for automatically kind of renaming and organizing your documents. Um, and up here in the menu, you can, you can quickly start and stop Hazel or run the rules on specific folders. Then we get to Amphetamine. Now Amphetamine um, is a little app that keeps your Mac awake. So I've just activated it here and it's activated for the default time, which is an hour. But if I right click, I've got a bunch of other options. I can uh, activate in, uh, amphetamine indefinitely or for a custom amount of time. And it's basically gonna prevent my Mac from uh, going to sleep or from the screensaver turning on. So it's a really nice little quick, very lightweight little app um, to just, if you need to have something running in the background or you just don't want your Mac to go to sleep for whatever reason, it'll, it'll, um, it can handle that for you. Uh, so I'll end that session now. Um, and then we get to Flux. Flux is a little app that you may have heard about before. It basically um, changes the color of your display and in the evening when the sun starts going down, based on your location, so you can actually see it's found my location here, based on your location, when the sun starts going down, it'll, it'll remove the blue light from your display and so it actually goes quite yellow, quite orange in the evening. And this is just to help you sleep at night because too much blue light in your eyes late at night can kind of stimulate your brain and I don't ask me about the science behind it, but the blue light can help, uh, can make you stay awake. So Flux basically limits that blue light in the evening and in the early morning and it just runs in the background. There's nothing much to do. It's just set and forget based on your location. Even when we went to Australia recently and the sun was setting at a slightly different time, it just found my new location and adjusted accordingly. So that's a really nice little app. Then we have Text Expander. Now Text Expander, I'll open the main app here, is a um, really nice app for quickly spitting out big blocks of text. So for example, I have like emails that I use to respond to people who asks me, ask me common questions. And I can basically type this little abbreviation down here. So semicolon distractions. And this whole email can be spit out at once. And the really nice thing about Text Expander is the different fill-in options. So for example, I can, f uh, I can have a fill-in and leave a space for like uh, a single line to fill in someone's name, or I've got optional sections or pop-up menus and all sorts of things that I can do to customize and personalize these blocks of text. And I use uh, Text Expander for all sorts of things. I use it for links, um, composing emails in MailChimp, stuff on my website, um, link tracking, all sorts of stuff. When you when you get started with Text Expander, it can be a bit of a bit of a blank canvas, but once you start using it and you you start kind of setting up all these little shortcuts for common bits of text that you use. For example, like typing your email address or your home address. Um, you, it will just save you a ton of time. And along with that copy clipboard in Alfred, Text Expander is probably the next tool that really just helps me save a ton of time from typing on the computer. And I know that David Sparks from the Mac Power Users had a lot of good things to say about it when he was on the podcast. So that's Text Expander. In the menu, you can, um, you can access all your different... Uh, 
um, snippets, but I actually just mainly access them using the keyboard shortcut Control Option T, so I can search um, for a snippet, um, like if I don't know, I just type my name, I can probably find something, or I can use uh, Control Option Command T to open the whole window. Um, so those are the shortcuts that I mainly rely on, but you can access Text Expander up here as well. Then we have Skitch. Now Skitch is a nice uh, screen grab app designed by Evernote and it basically lets you take screen grabs um, which you can then annotate. Now when I normally take screen grabs I use the keyboard shortcut Command Shift 4 to create this little crosshair and I can click and drag to make a little shortcut which has now been saved to Dropbox. Um, with Skitch I can use the keyboard shortcut Command Shift 5 and it looks slightly different but I can now grab a section of my screen I can capture that Skitch will open up, and now I can actually annotate this image, and I've got arrows that I can use, I've got text, I've got blocks, I've got little uh, little annotation things, and you've even got like a little blur feature. So if I want to blur out a bit of sensitive information, like a piece of text, I can actually blur that out as well. And then you can just kind of drag that image to the dashboard, or to the, to the desktop, sorry, and you're done. There's your image ready to go. Um, so Skitch is a really nice little, quick little screen grab app for quickly grabbing those um, images and, and for annotating, really, is my main use. And then next to Sketch is Evernote. So Evernote, um, I've got uh, this. Uh, uh, this is, um, I describe it as like a scratch pad. So a lot of people have like a notebook next to them during the day. And um, this is kind of the digital version of that. Uh, you can just access it by using the keyboard shortcut Control Command N to quickly um, open and close this little window. And it's just great for jotting down notes, phone numbers, any little bits of information you need while you're on while you're on your Mac. And I don't necessarily save these notes to Evernote. Sometimes I'll just type stuff in here just as a temporary kind of holding bay. Um, and this is actually one of my favorite features of Evernote is just being able to quickly kind of capture and store bits of information here. With the Clipper, you can um, screen grab or you can even record an audio note as well. I don't use those as much, but yeah, I love this little notepad. Uh, then we have Dropbox. Um, I don't use the Dropbox menu bar app much, but um, it is nice to, to have on, on, on kind of like handy for just seeing um, kind of the recent updates to, to documents and things. So you can see there's that screenshot that I captured um, just now. It has been put in my screen grabs folder. Here are the receipts that were automated by Hazel. They were looked at recently. And it's, it's just nice to kind of see which, uh, see my most recent files. And I can see that, you know, syncing is up to date and I can quickly see how much space I've got left as well. Then we come to one password. Now this is the one password mini app, which I can use to quickly search for passwords. So I can search for um, like iCloud to get my iCloud login and um, just any other key bits of information that I have stored in one password. Um, I also use the keyboard shortcut option command uh, backs um, backslash to basically open and close that little one password mini search search box. Um, and I love one password. If you're not using it already, um, one password is so, so useful for creating long, unique passwords for all your different accounts. Um, a lot of people have like a couple of passwords that they rely on for all of their accounts and it's not very secure. One password helps you create long, unique passwords like this for each account that you have. And, and logging in is really easy because once you get to a website, it'll recognize what site you're on and make the password accessible to you really quickly. So I highly recommend one password for just making your online life that much more secure. And then we come to rescue time. Now this rescue time is great for tracking your usage of your computer. So it, what it does is it runs in the background um, and it'll look at which apps and websites you spend time on and it'll record those. And uh, you, can, you can categorize apps as um, being productive or unproductive. So for example, Facebook you might categorize as unproductive, whereas like Evernote or Google Drive you might categorize as productive. And so it gives you a summary at the end of the week or month of how much time you spent on those productive um, services. With the menu bar up here, I can quickly access my dashboard, um, which I'll, I'll show you briefly now. Or I can um, like pause pause the um, the tracker for a little bit of time if I don't want it to monitor my behavior. Um, yeah, rescue time is great for just helping you to build that awareness so that you can kind of get a sense of how how productive you are being throughout the day. So hopefully, here we go. Let's see. I'm on 69. Uh, not bad. I've got two two and a quarter hours of very productive time. Quite a lot of neutral time. Um, so yeah, about seven hours on the computer so far today. 
a um, little bit of a distracting time in the morning there. Um, but yeah, it's just great for giving you that awareness of, of how you're spending your time on the computer. Okay, then we come to Backblaze. Now, Backblaze is a really handy app. When I when I first heard about Backblaze, I was like, oh, finally, this is just what I need because Backblaze is a backup solution. And before I had Backblaze, I was basically handling my backups by using an external hard drive and uh, Apple Time Machine to back up my... Um, uh, so this, I was using Time Machine to back up my drive, which is obviously, it's okay, it works really well, but it does rely on you plugging in a hard drive every now and then. And, you know, I the hard drive is susceptible to die. It lives in my house, which, you know, might go missing or get lost or it could catch it, uh, go up in flames. Whereas Backblaze, remote, uh, it backs up all your, your computer and updated files to the cloud. And the first backup takes a few days because it's it's copying your whole computer. But after that, it's pretty quick. Um, any any changes to files get pushed up to the Backblaze servers, and uh, it's all very secure as well. You can actually encrypt your backups. So I have an encryption key for my backups stored in one password. And so you know, even if Backblaze uh, got hacked, um, or I mean, there are probably security experts that might cringe at me saying this, but I believe I'm right in saying that you know they can't get into my data because I've got the encryption key. I'm the only one that can unlock that data. Uh, touch wood. So Backblaze just takes a lot of the hassle out of backing up my computer. It just, as long as I'm connected to Wi-Fi, my computer is staying backed up remotely, which is the peace of mind for that is incredible. I think it's like $5 a month for Backblaze, which for me is a price well worth paying. Um, then we have a bunch of Apple uh, icons. There's Time Machine, the display, Bluetooth, um, audio settings, Wi-Fi, those aren't any anything in particular, they're just default icons. And then the final one I wanted to show you is Fruit Juice. Um, so Fruit Juice is a battery kind of monitoring utility. It basically prompts you to unplug your battery um, every now and then to maintain good battery health because it's not good to be plugged in all the time. Um, so when you've been plugged in too long, it'll actually put, pop up a notification and say, hey, you should unplug now and, and um, go on your battery for a little while to drain it. And so you can see I've got a target time for the day here, two hours and 12 minutes. I've actually spent over five and a half hours on my battery, which is great, so my average is good. And it shows you like your power history over time. So for the last 30 days, here's a breakdown of my power history. Um, and um, it, it'll even prompt you to run maintenance cycles every now and then. So you do like a complete charge and discharge of your battery. And so it's just helping you to, um, uh, yeah, just maintain like good battery kind of habits on your computer. So at the moment, my battery condition is good based on kind of the age of my computer, about one and a half years old. And there you have it. Those are the menu bar apps that I'm using. Um, if I've missed anything or if you've got anything really cool that you want to let me know about, please leave me a comment on this uh, blog post as I, I, I love tinkering with different apps and tools and things. So if you have a, a menu bar app that you really recommend, let me know. Uh, hope you enjoyed the video. I'll catch you next time.